Multi-Paradigm Data Science with the Wolfram Language. Section 3, Get to Know Your Data. We are talking about exploratory data analysis as a way of getting to know your data before really starting to use it for modeling or machine learning. We've looked at some tools for basic visual exploration of the data, a scatter plot or a simple clustering of the samples, things we can easily try out even if we have no idea how we want to proceed with the analysis. In addition to these traditional EDA tools, there are many different techniques we can borrow from various fields to look at our own data differently. A word cloud provides a quick intuitive understanding of the most commonly occurring words in a piece of text, but we can also use it to visualize data anytime we are trying to find the most commonly occurring elements in a list. For example, to find the most popular registered official language in the countries of the UN, we could look at the counts or we could look at the word cloud, which allows us to quickly identify the most popular ones in comparison to the other languages. With two-dimensional data like the Old Faithful geyser eruptions or the Fisher's iris samples, where we can compare two features at a time, it's easy to lay out the samples in two dimensions and look at them. But with more complicated data with multiple features, it's hard to visualize the data without significant pre-processing. The Wolfram language provides a multi-paradigm tool to easily visualize samples in feature space across different types of data. Feature space plot, given a list of samples, it lays them out in an appropriate feature space for exploratory analysis. It uses sophisticated pre-trained feature extractors for specific types of data, like images, text, or audio. Graphs are a great tool for information visualization. Highlighting graph elements help information stand out. By using algorithmic graph layouts, much of the structure in a graph, such as connected components, become self-evident. These are the countries in Asia and the neighbors with whom they share a border. Laying them out in a graph, it becomes clear which are the hubs sharing borders with many neighbors and which seem to be the more geographically secluded countries. Superimposing geographically distributed data on maps can provide insight into the relationship of the data with the geography of the place. These are the earthquakes of magnitude 7 or higher around the world since 1980. Superimposing the locations on the world map, we see they occur in a specific geographic region. A geohistogram highlights the most seismically active parts of this region and reminds us about the ring of fire. Timeline plots show when events occur relative to each other. Here is a timeline plot of the earthquakes of varying magnitude around Japan in March of 2011, and we can see this cluster of aftershocks in the days right after the Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami that destroyed the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. In summary, we looked at a few non-traditional tools for visual exploration of data. With a multi-paradigm workflow, you can leverage functionality from across disciplines to quickly establish relationships between different types of features in the data set or to just look at your data very differently. Some of the tools we looked at in this segment are word clouds, feature space plots, graphs, geographics, and timelines.